Yo, what's up guys? It's Sean with Pokemon over here to talk to you another time about how to invest. What? Sorry? No, this is a video on what not to do. We're not doing that. How to not buy... What not to buy? Okay. What's up guys? Here's Sean with Pokeball telling you what not to buy. No, that's not it either. That's not it? It's how to not invest. Things to not do. All right. Friggin' idiot. Coming at you again, this is Sean with Pokeball. We're going to tell you what not to do with investing and investing. Let's check it out. Holy sh All right, guys, we're going to jump right into this video. I want to thank you for seeing my face and clicking on it. You're awesome. Also, guys, stick around to the end of the episode for today's pro tip of the day. So today we're going to talk about three things to not do when investing. I know we talk a lot about investing on this channel, but let's talk about things that we shouldn't be doing, things that we should be looking for. So number one, guys, do not go all in on just one item. So guys, what do we mean by this? Diversify yourself. This is a pretty uh, basic and like very cornerstone type of idea when it comes to investing in, in general. And that's to kind of spread yourself out. Don't go all in on one item, just for multiple reasons. Number one, if you take an L on that item, you don't want to have a thousand of them, right? So that's just that's just basic knowledge. And also there's no fun in that, right? So you may feel very strongly about an item. Am I gonna you know fault you for buying a hundred UPCs and where those are gonna be at in you know 10 years from now? No, uh, but I'm saying maybe we don't buy you know a hundred Pikachu V boxes with Brilliant Stars. It's just an idea of being able to spread yourself out, covering more bets, uh, you know, just like a basic degenerate strategy on how not to lose all your money all at once, right? So that is the number one thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is some people have an idea that you can corner the market in this way, but with contemporary product, it's really just a crapshoot. Uh, no one really knows exactly the items that are going to do well long term. I mean, obviously there are some no brainer items, which we've already brought up, but no one knows what certain things are gonna do, certain cards, stuff like that. So kind of spread yourself out and also, this allows you to kind of be in a lot of different places all at once. So I've always taken that kind of approach. So that just goes back to what type of, you know, what type of collector you are, what type of investor you are. But my first, my number one rule on today's uh, top three, I guess, is gonna be don't go all in. All right, number two guys, don't be a hoarder. All right, what do I mean by this? Have a plan guys, depending on what type of investor you are let's just make it really simple and say there's two types right and i think everyone's a little bit of both but let's just say there's two types are you a passive investor or are you an active investor so are you passively just kind of going along with the hobby and just happy to be here a lot of times that i feel like that's me and i'm not really actively trying to realize the equity on those investments from let's say six or seven years ago but one thing that i have done in the past and this is honest to god truth is I would put like a lot, some of the stuff that you guys haven't seen on the underneath of whatever the item is, I have a purchase date, what I bought it for, like it's like on a little strip. It's not a post-it I would say, but it's like a little sticky strip that I bought on uh, online. But I would put the purchase date, how much I bought it for, and then that gives me a timestamp on when I might have a hard sell or a hard trade date. So you might be asking yourself, what is that? If you are an active investor and you're very serious about realizing equity, you need to put yourself on a timeline. So what I mean by that is timestamp what you purchased, how much you purchased it for, and then have a hard sell date or a hard trade date. So one thing that I would do is once something's matured and let's say I'm doing very well in it, let's say I have 3X, 4X equity in the item, I'm not gonna sell it for hard cash, a lot of times, pretty much every time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trade so I can get a lot of the new product and then I can do this same process again in three to five years. So it's kind of like you know a multiplicity type of approach, right? So let's say I buy four of something. Let's say they double in price, so now I have eight. I can open up, let's say four, still end up with the same value as the original as the you know original four that I had, right? And I had the pleasure of opening up four and then I'm gonna trade maybe two of those four to get one of something. That was, wow. Okay, you get what I'm trying to say. Don't be a hoarder, have a plan, and catalog your items with timestamps, date purchased, and how much you bought them for. Last bit of advice, guys, uh, on today's top three of what not to do is don't wing it.
All right, what do I mean by that? Keep track of your portfolio with an already existing resource. So certain websites such as, let's say, Polkadata or Collector's Cash, there are resources online that are free to use. I think all you have to do is sign up with your email and you can actually keep track and catalog your entire collection and investments depending on how you look at it, right? Your collection could also be your investment portfolio, right? I mean, if you, if you want to look at it that way, I like to look at it that way because now my objectives have kind of changed with the channel. It's nice to have those older products so I can open for you guys. Right. But depending on what you're doing, keep track of your portfolio. I use an Excel spreadsheet. I'm basic, but that's just because 10 years ago, there was no resources like there are now for keeping track of your, uh, you know, of your collection. Also guys, it's really an, it's a fun activity and it's also effective. I mean, if that's something that like brings pleasure to you, like for me, I love cataloging my items, my, the new stuff I bought, going to different pages that I have in my Excel spreadsheet and adding to certain items, say, oh, I picked up two more of these, maybe I picked up one more of these, filled that gap, whatever it is, that that speaks to me, you know, for my micromanagey, you know, controlly self. I like to do that. I like to manage my, you know, my collection, put it in an Excel sheet. Same thing with like when I'm collecting sets or trying to complete sets, I do the same thing. I like plugging holes. You know, that sounds totally wrong. I like filling gap. That sounds wrong. I like to complete sets. Uh, also guys in this, you need to be acknowledging your losses as much as your wins. So a lot of times, depending on when you purchase something or when you enter into a certain part of the hobby or the TCG, whether it's sealed product or cards, it is possible that you are taking L's at the moment. It is very um, responsible as I would say a collector and an investor to definitely recognize those L's. And then you need to understand why you took the L. So what do I mean by that? L is a loss, by the way. What about that product made it a loss, right? So maybe it's a special collection box that didn't have a popular Pokemon in it. Maybe they reprinted said product and it took, you know, a huge dump value wise. Then you have to also understand where you had big wins, right? So like, let's take a UPC from celebrations, right? If you took a big win on that, obviously they're up three X value, right? Who knows where they're going to go. If you took a win on that, you need to understand that for the next time that there's that, you know, the possibility of buying an item like that, always be looking out for special run product, less printed, more unique, lower population. You get what I'm trying to say. You want to be looking for that type of item in future sets. And that way you can take that W again, rather than taking an L on an item that there's a million of that you can find in every big box distributor, if you get what I'm saying. And good news is guys, on a lot of this stuff, probably if not all of it, depending on how you bought it, it will turn into a win at some point with time. Obviously that is not the most effective strategy when it comes to investing, but keep that in mind. If you buy anything at or around retail, history has shown us with Pokemon that you will be taking the W uh, down the road just giving it time. Even the worst, most trash ass bootleg crap bleh, sets, Steam Siege, they are experiencing, you know, an uptick in value. So just something to consider uh, when you're, when you're, you know, approaching the market and things that you're going to buy. I hope that, I, I hope that makes sense. Okay. Pro tip of the day. If you are just starting in this hobby, there's so many people that are still entering to this day. A good strategy. A lot of people ask me, what do you do? Do I own it? Do I buy it? Do I keep it safe? Do I that? I totally get where you're at. I was there, but you know what? I got, I got really good advice 10 years ago and it's still really good advice in my opinion now. Buy two. If you're always worried about what should I buy? What should, if you have the means, if you have the ability, if you have the financial capability to buy two of the item, take out the guesswork, buy two, rip one, keep one. This has always served me well. I do it to this day. You got to enjoy the cards on some level. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, then why the hell are you doing it? So that's my pro tip of the day. Buy one, rip one, if that makes sense. All right, guys, that is going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hit the buttons, do the things. I know I didn't say anything in the beginning. I'm tired of asking for subscribers. It makes me freaking sick, but we need them. We need you. So now I'm going to do it. Hit the, hit the button. No, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace out, guys. Have a great day.
Yo, what's up guys? If you want to see a video that I think that you might like after watching what you just watched, click the button right here. And if you want to be one of those people that want to subscribe to the channel and see how far this rabbit hole goes, the button's right here. Do it!